The Pigeon Finds a Hot Dog. Words and Pictures by Mo Willems. Oh, a hot dog. Yum, 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 yum. Ah, uh, may I help you? Scoot, scoot, scoot. Is that a hot dog? Not a hot dog, my hot dog. Ah, I have a question. I have never had a hot dog before. What does it taste like? Well, they are taste sensation. Each morsel is a joy, a celebration, and a bun. If you've never experienced the splendor of a hot dog, you should really... Wait a second. This is, hot dog is mine. I found it. Of course, enjoy. Go ahead. Ah, uh, would you say that it tastes like chicken? Can you believe this guy? What? It just tastes like a hot dog, okay? Okay, okay. So, it doesn't taste like chicken then. Oh, for Pete's sake. Hey, I'm a curious bird. That's it. It's my hot dog, right? Mine, 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 mine. I'm a curious bird. What do they taste like? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. This is unbelievable. Finders keepers is what I say. I can't take it anymore. What am I supposed to do? I think I've got an idea. You know, you're pretty smart for a duckling. Hmm, needs mustard. The end. The pigeon finds a hot dog. All right, friends. We are going to be making some artwork about pigeons because we just listened to the book, a uh, pigeon with a hot dog or something like that. So we are going to be drawing our own pigeons. So. The first thing we are going to do is we're going to draw our pigeon's head. Now to draw the pigeon's head, we're gonna draw it in the top corner of our paper. So you're gonna take your fist, your hand, make it into a fist, and you're gonna put it in that top corner. And then you're going to draw a circle around that hand. And that is going to be your pigeon's head. So we're not actually tracing the hand, we're just using it to make sure we draw our circle big enough. Now, I have a really big hand, so I'm gonna to try to make it a little bit smaller than my hand because my hand's real big. Your hands are a lot smaller, so this should work for you. Won't really work for me. My hands are too big. Those big adult hands. Okay, so now I have my circle. That is my pigeon's head. Whew. We got a big head. All right, now we're gonna do our pigeon's body. So to do the pigeon body, we are going to make the letter L, okay? So we are going to go down and over. That's our pigeon's neck and body. Watch closely. We are going to go down and over again, but instead of making an L this time, we're gonna kind of try to make a J, okay? So we're gonna go down like that. Or like a big U, depends on how you wanna look at it. Now, to do our pigeon's wing, we're going to just make kind of like a curved line for our pigeon's wing. To draw his feet, it's very simple. We're going to do a line with three little toes. A line, three little toes. Pretty simple. Now, we need our pigeon's neck line. We're going to do a straight line. We want it to be the width of your finger, okay? so. Put your finger down, draw a line above and a line below. There you go. That is your pigeon's neckline. Do your pigeon's eyes. So you're gonna draw a big circle with a small circle inside. That smaller circle will be black, so I'm just gonna lightly color it in so that it's a little less creepy to look at. Now, to draw our pigeon's mouth, we are just going to draw a curved line and then a straight line. And then a straight line and then a curved line. So another way to draw it would be to draw the letter V and then to do two curved lines. So one more time, draw the letter V, curve line, curve line. 
There is your pigeon. Now, my pigeon's head is really big and his neck is and his body's a little bit small. I'm gonna try to fix that a little bit by making his back a little bit higher. See if that fixes it. And if not, like don't worry about it. It's alright. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I think it looks good. And if you're if you're worried about your pigeon because you're like, my pigeon looks weird, that's okay. Everyone's artwork looks different. Yours is gonna look different than mine. Mine's gonna look different than yours. Yours is gonna look different than your neighbor's. That's okay. Now, uh, the next thing we do with any drawing, any drawing, is we trace it. You are going to use a black Crayola marker, washable Crayola marker, and we are gonna trace over our lines. And at this point, you can color in that eye When we trace, we want to make sure we go slow. This isn't a race. We're not trying to be the first one done. This Crocker doesn't care if you can do it fast. Really don't. I just want to see your nicest work. Everything we drew in pencil, every single thing we're going over with our black marker. Now, you're gonna count to 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Now, count to 20. The next step you need to do is you need to erase. So if you have a big fat eraser, use that if you only have your pencil eraser go ahead and use that we are going to erase any pencil lines that you can still see even after you traced because we are trying to trick people into thinking that we just drew this perfect the first time with our marker that we didn't have this practice drawing thing where we can make a lot of mistakes we're trying to trick them into thinking we're just amazing at drawing so I think that's all the lines that I see. So now we can color. Now, I know you guys all have a basic color crayon set, but if you want, ask mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever your adult is at home, um, if you want more crayons so you have more color choices, that is awesome. It will make art, in my opinion, more fun because you have more choices for your colors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick out a blue color and color, actually no, I'm gonna do the small parts first. So I'm gonna do his beak first. So I'm gonna pick out like an orangey yellow color for his beak. And remember our rules of coloring. So you need to outline a shape before you color it in. Leave no white spaces. And color in the same direction. All right, and now I'm gonna pick out, I think a, like a blue color. If you have blue, you can do blue, you can do gray. If you want a black pigeon, you can do black. Actually, black kind of looks gray when you use it. This, this color. Ooh, that's like the perfect color, this cadet blue. I'm gonna use that. Now I'm gonna use my bumpers and go all around my picture with my bumpers first. Now that I have my bumpers, I can go quickly in the same direction. So I'm gonna go up and down for this one. This keeps our crayon inside the shape. You should probably do bumpers around the eye too, because we don't want it going past that line and getting into our eyeball. We don't want that. Perfect pigeon color. Okay. Now time for the body. Question, friends. 
Should I switch colors and do a different color for the body? Okay, I hope you all just said no, because that would be correct. I want to have the same color that I did for the head, I want for the body. So bumpers first, and then in the same direction. Bumpers. This looks great. This looks awesome, right? We got all this white space. We need to do something with this white space. So I think because we just read the book. The pigeon finds a hot dog. I think we should draw a bunch of hot dogs in the background. I think that would be super funny and a good way to remember the book. So I'm gonna show you how to draw a hot dog. And a hot dog is pretty, pretty easy. So the first thing we need to do for a hot dog is draw an oval. By the way, pick up your pencil. That's what we're using first. We always use pencil first to draw. So we draw our oval and it's about, I'm about the size of my finger. So you for you guys, it's probably like the size of two fingers. And then we're gonna make a curved line kind of going to look like another oval, but we only see part of it. Curve line that goes all the way down, all the way back. You can kind of see we're kind of getting a hot dog shape here. Then we're going to do another one of these shapes on the other side. There we go. We've got a hot dog and a bun. So we're going to repeat this all over the picture. Okay. Now you can also do some spots where you only see part of the hot dog. And to do that, you just draw that part that you would see. So the bun, the dog, the bun. Bun, the dog, the bun. Made that one a little too long. There we go. Very good. Okay. Now, can you guess what I'm going to do next? If you say trace, you would be correct. So all those hot dogs we just drew, race over them.
Now, again, before we erase, we are going to count to 20. So in your head, you can count to 20. Same as before, take our big fat eraser if you have it, or pencil eraser if that's all you got. And erase any those pencil lines that you might still see. Now, for the background, if you have markers, you may use markers for the background. If all you have is crayons, then you can use just crayons like we did with the bird for the background. I have markers, so I'm going to use markers for my background. Red hot dogs with brown buns. And if it's hard to reach part of your drawing, you notice I just flipped mine around so that I could color this part easier. Instead of resting my hand on the artwork, I flipped it so that it was more comfortable for me to color this particular hot dog. So always remember, if, if you go to color something and it doesn't feel comfortable, move the paper so that it does feel comfortable. Whatever is best and most comfortable for you is what we want, because that's going to make the best artwork. Now to do the rest of the background, I'm actually going to switch to crayon and I'm going to pick a color, maybe a few colors, and do the background. So let's do purple. So I'm using 
Pusteria Lavender and Tickle Me Pink. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like big splotches of color and then overlap the different colors. What I mean by overlap is see where these two colors meet instead of just leaving it? I'm gonna take a little bit of the purple, put it on top of the pink, and a little bit of the pink, and put it on top of the purple. That is called layering. You put one color on top of another color. When you get to the edge of your picture, sometimes it's easier to put a little bumper there so you're not coloring all the way to the edge because your crayon goes off the edge of the paper and then it has a tough time getting back on the paper. Make sure when you're coloring you're not going in a bunch of different crazy directions. See how I picked diagonal? That's the way I need to continue to color this. Even if I move to a different part of the picture, I gotta make sure the whole thing, the whole background's going in the same direction. Because if you start going in a bunch of different crazy directions, it looks super sloppy and not good. And we don't want super sloppy. We want neat and tidy. my pigeon with hot dogs. Pretty simple, pretty fun. I think good start to art.